DAZN, otherwise known as The Zone, is the first global pure sport live on-demand streaming service, as it's told on their website. The service is owned by British sports media company Perform Group. It was created in 2015 and launched in 16 in some European countries. Its arrival has been called as disruptive and its business model simple and straightforward. As soon as it got media exposure, it was referred to as the Netflix of sports, but the chief revenue officer replied saying that the Zone's approach was much more complex because their service includes live stream video more than just archive footage. The number of subscribers has kept growing. They expect to have 20 million subscribers by 2022, expanding the service to nine countries, launching in Austria, Switzerland, and Germany, then Japan, in 2017, Canada, 2018, US, and Italy, and now they're arriving to Spain and Brazil. But how did they make it? Simple-ish. Buying broadcasting rights of worldwide known sporting events, like the FIFA World Cup and the UEFA Championship matches, and domestic competitions like English Premier League and Spanish La Liga for most of the covered areas. The NBA is available for some European countries, NFL for most of the countries they cover, Canada included, where of course, the NFL has a massive amount of fans. They also have the right to some regional competitions, only for the countries involved, like in the case of Copa Sudamericana that is just for Brazil. Also, they have invested and in, focused a lot in combat sports, like boxing and MMA, as the platform strategy to make a successful entry to the US. But the list, as you can see, is quite long, and it includes minor sports events or sports popular only in certain countries as well. Also, they have agreements with sports celebrities to join them as brand ambassadors to increase their brand status. People like Cristiano Ronaldo, Neymar, Jose Mourinho, Canelo Alvarez, and Paolo Maldini have lined up for that team. But with the Mexican boxer Saul Canelo Alvarez, they decided to make one more step signing a 365 million contract for the next 11 fights in the coming five years. That contract has been called the richest contract in sports history. It's 33 plus million dollars per fight, a little bit more than two dollars per second. The Zone, of course, will stream the fights disrupting the market so hard that HBO, known for broadcasting the major boxing events in the last 45 years, has quit the boxing business altogether. And it doesn't stop here. For the fight between Canelo and Rocky Fielding, The Zone produced its first episodic program, Canelo vs. Rocky, showing the behind the scenes of both boxers training for the event. The show was also aired on The Zone's platform, YouTube, and some mainstream TV networks. As you can see, there was a lot of money invested here before the platform was released. Most came from Leonard Blatbanik, the chairman of Access Industries, who owns Perform Group, who owns The Zone. Blavatnik is the 48th wealthiest person in the world, with a net worth of 20 plus billion dollars. Most of his fortune comes from the petrochemical and oil industries. The platform fee is $9.99 per month, with a free one month trial. Of course, you need to be located in one of the countries we mentioned before to enjoy that content, which changes depending on where you are. The Zone has gotten mixed reviews from magazines and blogs. And reading some comments and opinions from users, they don't seem to be too happy with the streaming and the service in general, customer service included. It's quite easy to find a lot of comments about the streaming problems with the NFL games in Canada, for example. Most complaints were around pre-match information and failure with the audio and the very low resolution when you're streaming in the lower quality. There's a Twitter account called The Zone Sucks where users can just complain about the service and upload videos about the platform's fails, like screens with the spinning wheel or frozen screens during the stream. On the other side, all of us know that an unsatisfied customer is much prone to writing a bad review than a satisfied customer is to write a good one. Anyway, if you're considering joining, it would be smart to take a look at those reviews yourself and test the service thoroughly during that month's trial, so you can be sure it's worth your money. The Zone is supposed to work on multiple devices from laptops or computers to video game consoles, tablets, and smartphones. The app works for Android and iOS. If you're a current The Zone subscriber, vote in this poll about how you rate the service. Let us know in the comments how your experience has been, and if you're John Skipper, the The Zone's chairman, leave a comment saying hello and share this video, please. It will be helpful for us. By the way, this is the cliche moment asking you to subscribe or comment on this video. I guess we're done for now. Stay fresh.